Is anarcho-capitalism a type of capitalism? Anyone who's followed political discussion on the net has probably come across people calling themselves libertarians but arguing from a right-wing pro-capitalist perspective. For most Europeans, this is weird, as in Europe, the term libertarian is almost used in conjunction with socialist or communist. In the U.S., though, the right has partially succeeded in appropriating the term for itself. Even stranger, however, is the, uh, that a few of these right-wingers have started calling themselves anarchists in what must be the finest example of an oxymoron in the English language, anarcho-capitalist. Arguing with fools is seldom rewarded, but to allow their foolishness to go unchallenged risks allowing them to deceive those who are new to anarchism. This is what the section of the anarchist FAQ is for, to show why the claims of these anarchist capitalists are false. Anarchism has always been anti-capitalist, and any anarchism that claims otherwise cannot be a part of the anarchist tradition. So this section of the FAQ does not reflect some kind of debate within anarchism, as many of these types like to pretend, but a debate between anarchism and its old enemy, capitalism. In many ways, this debate mirrors the one between Krop uh, Kropotkin and Herbert Spencer, an English pro-capitalist minimal statist, at the turn of the 19th century, and as such, it is hardly new. The Anarcho-capitalist argument hinges on using the dictionary definition of anarchism or anarchy. They try to define anarchism as being opposition to government and nothing else. However, dictionaries are hardly politically sophisticated and their definitions rarely reflect the wide range of ideas associated with political theories and their history. Thus, the dictionary definition is anarchism will tend to ignore its consistent views on authority, exploitation, property, and capitalism, ideas easily discovered if actual anarchist texts have been read. And of course, many dictionaries define anarchy as chaos or disorder, but we never see anarcho-capitalists using that particular definition. Thank you for the follow, whoever that just was. Let's see, Singal, thank you for the follow. And for this strategy to work, a lot of inconvenient history and ideas from all branches of anarchism must be ignored, from individuals like Spooner and Tucker to communists like Kropotkin and Malatesta. Anarchists have always been anti-capitalists. See section G for more on the anti-capitalist nature of individualist anarchism. Therefore, anarcho-capitalists are not anarchists in the same sense that rain is not dry. Of course, we cannot stop the anarcho-capitalists using the words anarcho-anarchism and anarchy to describe their ideas. The democracies of the West could not stop the Chinese Stalinist state from calling itself the People's Republic of China, nor could the Social Democrats stop the fascists in Germany calling themselves National Socialists. Nor could the Italian anarcho-syndicalists stop the fascists using the expression National Syndicalism. This does not mean that any of these movements' actual name reflected their content. China is a dictatorship, not a democracy. The Nazis were not socialists. Capitalists made fortunes in Nazi Germany because it crushed the labor movement, and the Italian fascist state had nothing in common with anarcho-syndicalist ideas of decentralized from the bottom-up unions and abolition of state and capitalism. Therefore, just because someone uses a label, it does not mean that they support the ideas associated with that label. And this is the case with Anarcho-capitalism. Its ideas are at odd with the key ideas associated with all forms of traditional anarchism, even individualist anarchism, which is often claimed as being a forebearer of their ideology. All we can do is indicate why anarcho-capitalism is not a part of the anarchist tradition and so, uh, and so has falsely appropriated the name. Section of this FAQ aims to do just that, present the case why anarcho-capitalists are not anarchists. We do this in part by indicating where they differ from genuine anarchists on essential issues such as private property, equality, exploitation, and opposition to hierarchy. In addition, we take the opportunity to present a general critique of right libertarian claims from an anarchist perspective. In this way, we show why anarchists reject the theory as being opposed to liberty and anarchist means, uh, anarchist ideals. We are covering this topic in an uh, FAQ for three reasons. Firstly, the number of libertarian and anarcho-capitalists on the net means that those seeking to find out what uh, find out about anarchism may conclude that they are anarchists as well. Secondly, unfortunately, some academics and writers have taken their claims of being anarchists at face value, having included their ideology into general accounts of anarchism. <sighs> These two uh, reasons are obviously related and hence the need to show the facts for, uh, uh, of the matter. As we've extensively documented in earlier sections, anarchist theory has always been anti-capitalist. There is no relationship between anarchism and capitalism in any form. Therefore, there is a need for this section in order to indicate exactly why so-called anarcho-capitalists are, uh, are not anarchists. As we will be quickly seen from our discussion, as will be quickly seen from our discussion, almost all anarchists who become aware of 
Anarcho-capitalism quickly rejected as a form of anarchism. The better academic accounts do note that anarchists generally re uh, generally reject the claim, though. The last reason is to provide other anarchists with arguments and evidence to use against these so-called anarcho-capitalists and its claims of being a new form of anarchism. Um, so, this section does not, as we noted above, represent some kind of debate within anarchism. It reflects the attempt by anarchists to reclaim the history and meaning of anarchism from those who are attempting to steal its name, just as right-wingers in America have attempted to appropriate the name libertarian for their pro-capitalist views, and by so doing, ignore over 100 years of anti-capitalist usage. However, this section also serves two other purposes. Firstly, critiquing right libertarian and so-called anarcho-capitalist theories allows us to explain anarchist ones at the same time and indicate why. They are better. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Secondly, and more importantly, the ideas and ideals that underline so-called anarcho-capitalism are usually identical or at the very least similar to those of neoliberalism. This was noted by Bob Black in the 1980s when a, quote, wing of the Reaganist right has obviously appropriated with suspect a selectivity uh, such libertarian themes as deregulation and volunteerism. Ideologues indi indignant that Reagan has tra uh, travestied their principles. Tough shit. I noticed that it's their principles, not mine, that he found suitable for travesty. The libertarian is a conservative. That's what that was. This was echoed by Noam Chomsky two decades later when... Quote, nobody takes right-wing libertarianism seriously as everyone knows that a society that worked by its principles would self-destruct self in three seconds. The only reason why some people pretend to take it seriously is because you can use it as a weapon. See Understanding Power, page 200. As neoliberalism is being used as an ideological basis of the current attack uh, on the working class, critiquing so-called anarcho-capitalism and right libertarianism also allows use to build theoretical uh, allows use to build theoretical weapons to use to resist this attack and aid the class struggle. Uh, a few more points be before beginning. Um, when debating with libertarian or so-called anarcho-capitalists, it's necessary to, rem necessary to remember that while they claim real capitalism does not exist, anybody, 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 has anybody heard a particular um, person claim that real, oh, that's just not real capitalism. That's not true capitalism. Hmm, it's almost like I've heard this argument before from somewhere. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, while they claim that real capitalism does not exist because all existing forms of capitalism are statist, they will claim that all the good things we have, <laughs> advanced medical technology, consumer choice of products, etc., are nevertheless due to capitalism. Interesting. Yet, if you point out that any problems in modern life, these will be blamed on statism. Since there has never been and never will be a capitalist system without some sort of state, it's hard to argue against this so-called logic. Many actually use the example of the internet as proof of the power of capitalism, ignoring the fact that the state paid for its development before turning it over to companies to make a profit from it, and the a vast majority of the technologies that underpin it were developed using a, commu a communalistic or communistic style of open source technology development. Similar points can also be made about numerous other products of, uh, capital of the capitalism and the world we live in to artificially separate one aspect of the complex evolution fails to understand the nature and history of the capitalist system. In addition to this ability to be selective about the history and results of capitalism, their theory has a great escape clause. If wealthy employers abuse the power or rights of the working class, as they have always done, then they have, according to the quote-unquote libertarian ideology, ceased to be capitalists. This is based upon the misperception that an economic system that relies on force cannot be capitalistic. Hmm. This is very handy as it can absolve the ideology from blame for any excessive oppression which uh, results from its practice. Thus, individuals are always to blame, not the system that generated the opportunities for abuse they freely used. Anarchism has always been aware of the existence of free market capitalism, particularly its extreme minimal state wing, and has always rejected it. As, uh, as discussed in Section 7, linked in the FAQ, anarchists from Proudhon onwards has, have rejected the idea of any similar aims and goals and significantly vice versa. As academic Alan Carter notes, anarchist concern for equality as a necessary precondition for genuine freedom means, quote, 
That is one very good reason for not and confusing anarchists with liberals or economic libertarians. In other words, for not lumping together everyone who is in some way or another critical of the state. It's why calling the likes of Nozick anarchists is highly misleading. Some notes on anarchism, page 141 to 145 in Anarchist Studies, volume 1, number 2, and page 143, if you want those quote citations. So anarchists have evaluated quote-unquote free market capitalism and rejected it as a non-anarchist for over a 150 years. Attempted by, uh, attempts by so-called anarcho-capitalists to say that their system is anarchistic flies in the face of this long history of anarchist analysis. That some academics fall for their attempts to appropriate the anarchist label for the ideology is false premise. Um, I did. I, I did non-binary. Um, it is, quote, uh, it, quote, it is judged to be anarchism largely because some anarcho-capitalists say they are anarchists and because they criticize the state. See uh, Peter Sabatini, Social Anarchism, number 23, page 100. More generally, we must stress that most, if not all anarchists, do not want to live in a society just like this one, but without state coercion and the initiation of force. Anarchists do not confuse freedom with the right to govern and exploit others, nor with the ability of being able to change masters. It is not enough to say we can start our own cooperative business in such a society. We want the abolition of the capitalist system of authoritarian relationships, not just in change of bosses or the possibility of little islands of liberty within a sea of capitalism, islands which are always in danger of being flooded and our activity destroyed. Thus, in this section of the FAQ, we will analyze many so-called anarcho-capitalist claims on their own terms. For example, the importance of equality in market or why capitalism cannot be reformed away by exchanges on the capitalist market. But it does not mean we desire a society nearly identical to the current one. Far from it, we want to transform the society into one more suited for developing and enriching individual, uh, individuality and freedom. But before we can achieve that, we must critically evaluate the current society and point out its basic limitations. Finally, we will dedicate this section of the FAQ to those who have seen the real face of free market capitalism at work, the working men and women, anarchist or not, and be friends as well, murdered in the jails and concentration camps or on the streets by hired assassins of capitalism. <sighs> that is the prefix. That is the prefix. I'm going to do, do a couple of sections here. Well, not a couple of sections, but we're gonna. I'm gonna try and get through the first section, maybe. <clears throat> so, are so-called anarcho-capitalists really anarchists? In a word, no. All right, we done here. Oh, you want like, you want like words and reasons and stuff, huh? All right, f fine. Um. Fair enough, Kaz. Sleep well. Okay. Well, I suppose. While so-called anarcho-capitalists obviously try to associate themselves with the anarchist tradition by using the word anarcho or calling themselves anarchists, their ideas are distinctly at odds with those associated with anarchism. As a result, any claim that their ideas are anarchist or that they are part of the anarchist tradition or movement are false. So-called anarcho-capitalists claim to be anarchists because they say they oppose the government. As such, as noted in the last section, they use a dictionary definition of anarchism. However, this fails to appreciate the anarchism as a political theory, not a dictionary definition. As dictionaries are rarely politically sophisticated things, this means that they fail to recognize that anarchism is more than just opposition to government. It's also a marked opposition to capitalism exploitation, private property. Thus, opposition to government is a necessary but not sufficient condition for being an anarchist. You also need to be opposed to exploitation and capitalist private property. As so-called anarcho-capitalists do not consider interest, rent, and profits, i.e. capitalism, to be exploitative nor oppose capitalist property rights, again, they are not, ca they are not anarchists. Moreover, so-called anarcho-capitalists, is inherently self-refuting. We can see that from the leading so-called anarcho-capitalist, Murray Rothbard. He thundered against the evil of the state, arguing that it, quote, arrogates it to itself a monopoly of force of ultimate decision-making power over a given area, to uh, given area territorial area. In and of itself, this definition is unremarkable. 
that a few people, an elite of rulers, claim the right to rule over others must be part of any sensible definition of state or government. However, the problems begin for Rothbard when he notes that, obviously, in a free society, Smith has the ultimate decision-making power over his own just property, Jones over his, etc. See The Ethics of Liberty, page 170 and page 173. The logical contradiction in this position should be obvious, but not to Rothbard or the people who follow this bullshit. It shows the power of ideology, the ability of means words, the expression, private property, to turn the bad ultimate decision-making power over a given area into the good ultimate decision-making power over a given area. Now, this contradiction can be solved in only one way. The owners of the given area are also its users. In other words, a system of possession or occupancy and use as favored by anarchists. However, Rothbard is a capitalist and supports private property, as do so-called ANCAPs. In other words, wage labor and landlords. This means that he supports a divergence between ownership and use, and this means that this ultimate decision-making power extends to those who use but do not own such property, i.e. tenants and workers. The status nature of private property is clearly indicated by Rothbard's words. The property owner is a, in a so-called anarcho-capitalist society possesses, quote, the ultimate decision-making power over a given area, which is also what the state has. Rothbard, ironically proved by his own definition that anarcho-capitalism is not anarchist. Rothbard does not try to solve this contradiction. Uh, Rothbard does try to solve this contradiction, but utterly fails. He simply ignores the crux of the matter. <clears throat> That's a pattern amongst them. That capitalism is based on hierarchy and therefore cannot be anarchist. He does this by arguing that a hierarchy associated with capitalism is fine as long as the private property that produced it was acquired in a just manner. In so doing, he yet again draws attention to the identical authority structures and social relationships of the state and property. As he puts it, quote, If the state may be said to properly own its territory, then it, it, then it is proper for it to make rules for everyone who presumes to live in that area. It can legitima, uh, legitimately seize or control private property because there is no private property in the area because it really owns the entire land surface. So long as the state permits its subjects to leave its territory, then it can be said to act as, uh, as does any other owner who sets down rules for people living on his property. Obviously, Rothbard argues that the state does not justly own its, own its territory, but given that the current distribution of property is just as much the result of violence and coercion of the state as the state, his argument is seriously flawed. It amounts, as we note in section four, to little more than immaculate conception of property unrelated to reality. Even assuming the private property was produced by the means Rothbard assumes, it does not justify the hierarchy associated with it as the current and future generations of humanity have effectively been excommunicated from liberty by previous ones. If, as Rothbard argues, property is a natural right and the basis of liberty, then why should the many be excluded from their birthright by a minority? In other words, Rothbard denies that liberty should be universal. He chooses property over liberty while anarchists choose liberty over property. Even worse, the possibility that private property can result in worse violations of individual freedom, at least in, of workers, than the state of its citizens was implicitly acknowledged by Rothbard. He uses as a hypothetical example a country whose king is threatened by a rising libertarian movement. The king responds by employing a cunning stratagem. Namely, he proclaims his government to be dissolved, but just before doing so, he arbitrarily parcels out the entire land of, the, of his kingdom to the ownership of himself and his relatives. Rather than taxes, his subjects now pay rent and he can regulate to regulate the lives of all the people who presume to live on his property as he sees fit. As he sees fit, Rothbard then asks, quote, now, what should be the reply of the libertarian rebels to, uh, to this pert challenge? If they are consistent utilitarians, they must bow to this subterfuge and resign themselves to living under a regime of a no less despotic than the one they had been battling for so long. Perhaps, indeed, more despotic, for now the king and his relatives can claim for themselves the libertarians' very principle of the absolute right of private property, an absoluteness which they might not have dared to claim before. End quote. 
So now, so not only does the property owner have the same monopoly of power over a given area as the state, it is more despotic as it is based on the absolute right of private property. And remember, Rothbard is arguing in favor of so-called anarcho-capitalism. And <laughs> if, quote, if you have unbridled capitalism, you will have all kinds of authority. You will have extreme authority. Chomsky, Understanding Power, page 200. So in practice, private property is um, So in practice, private property is a major source of oppression and authoritarianism within society. There is little or no freedom within capitalist production. As Bakunin noted, quote, the worker sells his person and his liberty for a given time. So in stark contrast to anarchists, so-called anarcho-capitalists have no problem with factory fascism, i.e. wage labor, a position which seems highly illogical for a theory calling itself libertarian. If it were truly libertarian, it would oppose all forms of domination, not just statism. This position flows from the so-called anarcho-capitalist definition of freedom as the absence of coercion, and will be discussed in Section 2 in more detail. Of course, Rothbard has yet another means to escape the obvious, namely that the market will limit the abuses of the property owners. Heard this one too before? Because I've, I've heard this one a fair amount too. Um, Angie, I told you, you fucking need to sit down and read this shit. D d they're not anarchists, Angie. They're not anarchists. This is not, um, this, this is, this is what I've been telling you. Like it's, it's not you, two camps of anarchists and you can't find your home. They aren't anarchists. This is, this is, this is the thing. This is, if I move into your, if I just fucking move into your house and start calling myself Angie. Oh no, I'm Angie now. You're going to be sitting there next to me, bitch slapping me, going, you're not me, motherfucker. You can't just move in and call yourself m by my name, and that's how it works. That's what these people have done. This is a bad faith fucking move. This is literally an infiltration. This is why it gets under my skin. They are not anarchists. If workers do not like their ruler, then they can seek another. However, this reply completely ignores the reality of economic and social power. Thus, the consent argument fails because it ignores the social circumstances of capitalism, which limit the choice of many. Anarchists have long argued that as a class, workers have little choice but to consent to the capitalist hierarchy. The alternative is dire poverty or starvation. These so-called anarcho-capitalists dismiss their claims by denying that there is such a thing as economic power. Rather, it's simply freedom of contract. Hmm, another word you hear them talk about all the time. Contracts come up a lot when they talk about this stuff. Anarchists consider such claims a joke. To show why, we need only quote, yet again, Rothbard on the abolition of slavery and, uh, slavery and serfdom in the 19th century. He argued correctly that, quote, the bodies of the oppressed were freed, but the property which they had worked and eminently deserved to own remained in the hands of their former oppressors. With economic power thus remaining in their hands, the former lords soon found themselves virtual masters once more of what they were now free tenants or farm laborers. The serfs and slaves had tasted freedom, but had been cruelly deri uh, deprived of its fruits. To say the least, anarchists fail to see logic in this position. Contrast this with the standard so-called anarcho-capitalist claims that if free market forces, voluntary exchanges, result in the creation of free tenants or farm laborers, then they are free. Yet laborers dispossessed by market forces are in exactly the same social and economic situation as ex-serfs and ex-slaves. If the latter do not have the fruits of freedom, nor do the former. Rothbard sees the obvious economic power in the latter case, but denies it in the former. It's only Rothbard's ideology that stops him from drawing the obvious conclusion. Identical economic conditions produce identical social relationships. And so capitalism is marked by economic power and virtual masters. The only solution is for so-called anarcho-capitalists to simply say that ex-serfs and ex-slaves were actually free to choose and consequently Rothbard was wrong. It might be inhuman, but it would at least be logically consistent. 
This perspective is alien to anarchism. For example, individualist anarchist William Bailey noted, under capitalism, there is a class system marked by a dependent industrial class of wage workers, a privileged class of wealth monopolizers, each becoming more and more distinct from the other as capitalism advances. This has been turned in, uh, this has turned property into, quote, a social power, an economic force destructive of rights, a fertile source of injustice, a means of enslaving the dispossessed. Under this system, equal liberty cannot obtain. Bailey notes that the modern industrial word, world under capitalist conditions have arisen under the regime of status, and so law made privileges. However, it seems unlikely that he would have concluded that such a class system would be fine if it had developed naturally, or that the current state was abolished while leaving the class structure intact. Tucker recognized that even the freest competition was powerless against the, quote, enormous concentration of wealth associated with modern capitalism. Normally, I'd be just like literally just doing this like straight through. Uh, why can't we? But like I've I've made these arguments so many fucking times at this point, but we're literally doing a, a full run, a full run of this because apparently people need to hear this verbatim. Therefore, anarchists recognize that, quote, free exchange or consent in unequal circumstances. Well, uh, the link is in chat. If you're looking at chat, why can't we be friends? Like it's it's the link. I just put the link in chat. Um. Therefore, anarchists recognize that free exchange or consent in unequal circumstances will reduce freedom as well as increasing individuality before in, uh, between individuals and classes. In other words, inequality will produce social relationships which are based on hierarchy and domination, not freedom. As again, Noam Chomsky managed to put it. So-called anarcho-capitalism, in my opinion, is a doctrinal system which, if ever implemented, would lead to forms of tyranny and oppression that, few, that have few counterparts in human history. There isn't the slightest possibility that its, in my view, horrendous ideas would be implemented because they would quickly destroy any society that made this colossal error. The idea of free contract between the potentate, uh, potentate and his starving subject is a sick joke. Thanks for the follow. Perhaps worth some moments in an academic seminar exploring the consequences of, in my view, absurd ideas, but nowhere else. You can read this uh, on Anarchism, interview with Tom Lane, 1996, Noam Chomsky. Um, clearly then, by its own arguments, so-called anarcho-capitalism is not anarchist. This should come as no surprise to anarchists. Anarchism as a political theory was born when Proudhon wrote, what is property? Specifically to refute the notion that workers are free when capitalist property forces them to seek employment by landlords and capitalists. He was well aware that in such circumstances, quote, violates equality by the rights of exclusion and increase and in freedom by despotism and has perfect identity with robbery. He unsurprisingly talks of the proprietor to whom the worker has sold and surrendered his liberty. For Proudhon, anarchy was the absence of a master, of a sovereign, while proprietor was synonymous with sovereign. For he who imposes his will as law and suffers neither contradiction nor control. This meant that property engenders despotism, as each proprietor is sovereign lord within the sphere of his property. Again, what is property, page 251, page 130, page 264, and pages 266 and 267 by Proudhon, if you want to read it yourself. It must also be stressed that Proudhon's classic work is a lengthy critique of the kind of apologetics for private property that Rothbard espouses to salvage his ideology from obvious contradictions. In Right at this moment, I'd like to interject. This is why constantly when you hear me talk about these sorts of topics— and these sorts of people who espouse this ideology, and I say they're shit anarchists, they're not good, they don't understand anarchism. Like, that's the, if somebody says they are like an ANCAP or a fucking whatever, right? And my go to is they don't understand anarchism. It's because all of the foundational texts of anarchism discuss this. 
This is not new. This has just been compressed into a FAQ on the anarchist FAQ site for people who need to hear this sort of stuff. Because the fact of the matter is, is any amount of logic should get you to the end result. If you can look at capitalism through an anarchist lens, you immediately see coercive elements. You immediately see oppressive elements. You immediately see a hierarchy. You see unjust authority. You see in unbalanced power dynamics. Any anarchist analysis looks at this and goes, yeah, no, that's, that's got to go, right? Just like the state, right? It, it immediately clicks. It immediately clicks. But you got these motherfuckers running around making these arguments and it's like, no, you're just, you don't understand anarchism, right? Like, I, they're like, the only, the only thing that springs to mind is like actual doctors on like Facebook arguing with the do your research crowd. Right? Like you need to do your research. I've got like two PhDs in molecular biology and immunology and I'm arguing with a Facebook Karen right now, right? It's shit like that. Do I defend all text from the link? What kind of fucking straw man bullshit are you trying to set me up for? And, and see, this is the thing. Even like tech support, even, even Smithian economics dictates that landlords are parasites, right? Even the father of capitalism says rentier class are parasites. The rentier class is a, 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 is a negative benefit to society as a whole, right? Fucking Smithian economics even dictates this. Swede, Emma, Emma economist, can f- confirm, right? Like, it, these motherfuckers don't even understand capitalism, right? Like, anarcho so-called anarcho-capitalists don't understand anarchism or capitalism. That's how insane this conversation is. That's why the only thing I can compare it to is with people to people with like actual medical degrees having to argue with like Facebook do your do your research Karens. It's like what? Ironically, Rothbard repeats the same analysis as Proudhon, but draws the opposite conclusion and expects to be considered an anarchist. Moreover, it seems equally ironic that so-called anarcho-capitalists call themselves anarchists while basing itself on the arguments that anarchism was created in opposition to. As shown, so-called anarcho-capitalism makes much sense as anarcho-statism, an oxymoron, a contradiction in terms. Hey, Matic. Which, again, remember, every time anybody's ever asked me about this topic. Angie, I'm done. I'm No, I'm done. Angie, after Scott came in here and tried to derail fucking D-Gen story time, I'm done. I'm done. He's banned on the channel. He's banned on Discord. I'm done. I'm done playing around. He's not an anarchist. This isn't up for debate, Angie. There's 170 years of history now at this point that can like is on my side for this. This is like this is like debating whether like water is wet and air is breathable at this point. I'm fucking done. There is no debate here. This isn't a debate. This is, as I was pointing out, this is why every single time I've ever brought up this topic is that it is an inorganic, bad faith argument attempted to invade a space, right? This is not a thing. You can't have a hierarchical hierarchy. You can't have a vertical horizontal. You can't have a coercive less coercive. You can't have an oppressive less oppressive. That's just not how shit works. (laughs) 
The idea that so-called anarcho-capitalism warrants the name anarchist is just simply fucking false. Only someone so ignorant of anarchism could maintain such an idea. You expect anarchist theory to show this to be the case? Well, the beautiful thing is that so-called anarcho-capitalism does it, does it by itself. Little wonder Bob Black, God bless the asshole, he is an asshole, but God bless him. Little wonder Bob Black argues, to demonize state authoritarianism while ignoring identical, albeit contract, uh, contract con uh, consecrated subservient arrangements in the large scale corporations which control the world economy is fetishism at its worst. The similarities between capitalism and statism are clear. There's, uh, and so why a so-called anarcho-capitalism can't be anarchist. To reject the authority, the ultimate decision-making power of the state, and embrace that of the property owner indicates not only a highly illogical stance, but one at odds with basic principles of anarchism and common sense. The wholehearted support for wage labor and capitalist property rights indicates that so-called anarcho-capitalists are not anarchists because they don't reject all forms of archy. They're obviously supporting the hierarchy between boss and worker, wage labor, and landlord and tenant. Anarchism, by definition, is against these forms, including the hierarchy generated by capitalist property. To ignore the obvious associated with capitalist property is highly illogical. In the at the least otherwise at most it's pro, it's bad faith argumentation in addition we must note that the as such inequalities in power and wealth will need defending from those subject to them and our so-called anarcho-capitalists recognize the need for private police and courts to defend property from theft and anarchists add to defend the theft and despotism associated with property Due to its support of private property and thus authority, so-called anarcho-capitalists end up retaining a state in its so-called anarchy. Namely, a privatized state whose existence its proponents attempt to deny simply by refusing to call it a state. Like an ostrich hiding its head in the sand, which they don't put, do, by the way. As Albert Meltzer put it, Common sense shows that any capitalist society might dispense with a state, but it could not dispense with organized government or a privatized form of it. If there were people amassing money and others working to amass it for them, the philosophy of anar so-called anarcho-capitalism dreamed up by the libertarian new right has nothing to do with anarchism as known by the anarchist movement. It is a lie, patently unbridled capitalism needs some force at, the, at its disposal to maintain class privilege, either from the state itself or from private armies. What they believe is, in fact, a limited state. That us, one in which the state has function to protect the ruling class, does not interfere with exploitation and comes as cheap as possible for the ruling class. The idea also serves another purpose, a moral justification for bourgeois consciences in avoiding taxes without feeling guilty. Anarchism, Arguments For and Against, page 50. For anarchists, this need of capitalism for some kind of state is unsurprising. For, quote, anarchy without socialism seems equally as impossible to us as socialism without anarchy. For in such a case, it would not be other than the domination of the strongest and would therefore set in motion right away the organization and consolidation of the domination, that is, the constitution of government. Melatista, Life and Ideas, page 148. Because of this, the so-called anarcho-capitalist rejection of anarchist ideas on capitalist property, economics, and the need for equality, they cannot be considered anarchists or a part of tradi uh, anarchist tradition. Thus, anarchism is far more than the common dictionary definition of no government. It entails being against forms of hierarchical, unjustified authoritarianism including those genera generated by capitalist prof uh, property. This is clear from the roots of the word anarchy. An, without, arcos, ruler, without, ruler. Is your landlord in charge of your pro uh, property that you live on? Yes. Can they set rules for you to live by? Yes. Can your boss at your job set rules for you to? Yes. Ruler, ruler, ruler. 
It's in the word. As Rothbard himself acknowledges, um, the, <laughs> yeah, I know, right, Swede? Uh, the property owner is the ruler of their property and therefore those who use it. For this reason, so-called anarcho-capitalism cannot be considered a form of anarchism. An actual anarchist must logically oppose the authority of the property owner along with that of the state. Uh, let's see. Lost my place there. Um, as so-called anarcho-capitalism does not explicitly or implicitly, for that matter even, call for economic arrangements that will end wage labor uh, la uh, and usury, it cannot be considered anarchism or a part of the anarchist tradition. Um... You know what? Okay. <sighs> Political theories should be identified by their actual features in history rather than labels. Once we recognize that, we soon find out that so-called anarcho-capitalism is an oxymoron. Anarchists and so-called anarcho-capitalists are not a part of the same movement or tradition. Their ideas and aims are in direct opposition of all kinds of anarchists. While anarchists have always opposed, an uh, opposed capitalism, so-called anarcho-capitalists have embraced it. And do this embrace, their so-called anarchy, will be marked by extensive differences in wealth and power, differences that will show themselves in relationships based, on, um, based upon subordination and hierarchy, such as wa wage labor, not freedom. Little wonder that Proudhon argued that property is despotism. It creates authoritarianism and hierarchical relationships between, um, between people in a similar way to statism. Their support for Free market capitalism ignores the impact of wealth and power on the nature and outcome of individuals' decisions within the market. For example, wage labor is less, uh, less efficient than self-management in production, but due to the structure and dynamics of the capitalist market, market forces will actively discourage self-management due to its empowering nature of workers. In other words, a developed capitalist market will promote hierarchy and unfreedom in production in spite of its effects on individual workers and their wants. Thus, free market capitalism tends to reinforce inequalities of wealth and power, not eliminate them. Furthermore, any such system of economic and social power will require extensive force to maintain it, and so-called anarcho-capitalist systems of competing defense firms will simply be, new, a new, be a new state enforcing capitalist power, property rights, and law. Overall, the lack of concern for meaning freedom within, produ uh, within production and the effects of vast differences in power and wealth within society as a whole makes so-called anarcho-capitalism a little, uh, little better than anarchism for the rich. Emma Goldman recognized this. God love her when she argued that rugged individualism has meant all the individualism for the masters in whose name political tyranny and social oppression are defended and held up as virtues while every aspiration, aspiration and attempt of man to gain freedom is denounced as evil in the name of that same individualism. Red Emma Speaks, page 112. And as such is no anarchism at all. So unlike anarchists, so-called anarcho-capitalists do not seek the abolition of the proletariat, to use Proudhon's expression, via changing capitalist property rights and institutions. Thus, so-called anarcho-capitalists and the anarchists have different starting positions and opposite ends in mind, and so they cannot be considered a part of the same tradition. As we discuss further in later sections, the so-called anarcho-capitalist claims to be uh, claims of uh, being anarchists are bogus simply because they reject so much of anarchist tradition as to make what they do accept non-anarchist in theory and practice. Little wonder Peter Marshall uh, said, "Quote: Few anarchists would accept the anarcho-capitalists into the anarchist camp since they do not share a concern for economic quality and social uh, justice, demanding the impossible." Page 565. We'll keep going through the document as the days and weeks and potentially years 